Greetings everyone, I'm Adam Harriton. In this video, I'm going to teach you a very useful skill, how to identify trees from a distance. Now, when we think of identifying trees, we probably think of standing directly in front of a tree and closely analyzing its key features. But sometimes we don't have the luxury of standing directly in front of a tree. Sometimes these trees are growing 200 yards away from us. And putting names on these trees can seem like a hopeless task, but it's not. In many cases, we can positively identify these faraway trees. And this is an incredibly useful skill because identifying distant trees helps us read and interpret landscapes effectively without even stepping foot in those landscapes. For example, if we are exploring the edge of a pond or a lake and we want to know what the flora, fauna, and fungi are like on the other side of the water, or if we are standing in a grassy field and we want to know what the flora, fauna, and fungi are like in a wooded area across the field, we can make some pretty accurate predictions based on our ability to identify from far away the trees that are growing there. To hone this skill, it's important that we ask ourselves four questions. Two of the four questions are specifically tailored to the autumn season, only because I'm filming this video in early November and here in Western Pennsylvania, November is the autumn season. So recently I was exploring the edge of a lake on a rather cloudy, dreary day. There wasn't much color in the landscape, but as I looked out to the other side of the water, I noticed that the leaves on some trees were golden yellow. And of course, my first thought was, what tree is doing this in early November? Now, instead of walking around the lake to see up close which tree it was, I wanted to attempt to identify it from far away. So if you are looking at this image right here and wondering to yourself, what tree is that? Let's work our way through four questions to help us put a name on the tree. Now the first question is very basic and broad, but it's important that we have an answer for it. Which trees grow in my area? If you are unfamiliar with which trees grow near you, your list of potential IDs will be huge. It's important to whittle down this list to only the candidates that grow locally. Now because I've been studying trees for many years, I don't have to consciously look at a list of trees for Western Pennsylvania, but if I were exploring, let's say the Southeastern United States, I'd feel much, much better looking at a list of trees. So when I look at these trees, I know that something like overcup oak or sand hickory is not a likely candidate because neither species grows around here. The tree could be another oak, it could be another hickory, but I'll have to ask myself a few more questions in order to narrow down my choices. The next question, what kind of habitat is the tree growing in? Now, this isn't always an easy question to answer, and sometimes knowing the identity of a tree is more likely to reveal habitat characteristics rather than the other way around. But we could still make some general predictions regarding the habitat of our mystery tree, and it could be as simple as noticing if the tree is growing in a forest, in a field, in a bog, in a river floodplain, or in an urban environment. When I look across the lake, I see a wooded area. If you see a wooded area, ask yourself if the woods are mature or not mature. Now, I actually know a little bit about the history of this particular area. This area was strip mined in the mid-1900s. So the trees that are growing here have only been growing for 60 years. In other words, a lot of these trees are pioneer species. Because I have this information, I'm guessing that I wouldn't see a lot of American beech or sugar maple or eastern hemlock because those trees are mid to late successional species that are not likely to dominate the canopy of a former strip mine. You can ask yourself those two questions any time of the year, but the next two questions are specifically tailored to the autumn season. So the third question is, which trees turn which colors in the autumn season? Many trees are predictable. Birches tend to turn yellow. Sumacs tend to turn red. Some trees like sassafras turn yellow, orange, or red. When you learn which trees turn which colors, your ability to identify a tree in the autumn season is greatly enhanced. Our mystery tree is golden yellow, but numerous trees turn yellow in the fall. How is it possible to narrow down our choices even further? Well, that's why we have the fourth question. And the fourth question is, which trees turn which colors when? So now we're talking about phenology. Phenology is the timing of biological life cycle events, such as leaf bud burst, flowering, fruiting, and autumn leaf color change. Many trees turn yellow in the autumn season, but they do so at different times. Birch would be an excellent guess for a mystery tree because birches are pioneer species whose leaves turn yellow. But almost all of the birches in my area have already turned yellow and dropped their leaves. Hickory would be a good guess because hickories turn yellow, but almost all of the hickories in my area have already turned yellow and even brown, and they've dropped most of their leaves for the year. But when we look at our mystery tree, it looks like it's at the peak stage of its fall color. 
So what pioneer tree has leaves that turn yellow later in the autumn season? Well, knowing what I know about local trees, I can narrow down the list to black locust, Norway maple, tulip poplar, and aspen. Now, black locust has compound or divided leaves, and when I look at the leaves of our mystery tree, I can clearly see that each leaf consists of one undivided leaf blade. So that rules out black locust. To differentiate between our final choices, I can look at how the leaves are moving. Norway maple and tulip poplar leaves will move in the wind, obviously, but the way they move is not that unique. They do not tend to flutter or shake. Aspen leaves will incessantly flutter and rock back and forth even in the slightest breeze. When I carefully analyze the leaves of our mystery tree and I pay attention to how the leaves are moving, I can clearly see that they are fluttering. They're rocking back and forth, which only gives me two choices, big tooth aspen or quaking aspen. From a distance, big tooth aspen and quaking aspen can look very similar and if you can only ID your tree as an aspen of some kind, then you've done great work and you can stop right there. But if you have binoculars or a really good zoom lens on your camera, or if you can get a close look at the leaves somehow, you will see that big tooth aspen has large conspicuous teeth around the margins, while quaking aspen has much smaller teeth. Our mystery tree with large conspicuous teeth is big tooth aspen, Populus grandidentata, a classic pioneer species that colonizes former strip mines. If you want to identify trees from a distance in the autumn season, it's important that you know those four things. Know which trees grow in your area, know which trees grow in a particular habitat, know which trees turn which colors, and know which trees turn which colors when. Now this skill can be applied all year round, not just during the autumn season. If you're trying to identify a distant tree in the winter season, I'd pay attention to winter silhouettes, bark patterns, and perhaps any fruits or leaves, either living or dead, that are persistent on the tree. In the spring, I'd really pay attention to phenology, when trees are leafing out, and when trees are flowering. So you can identify any tree from a distance. The key is to ask the right questions. When you ask the right questions that are specific to time and place, the universe can't help but deliver you some good answers. Thank you so much for watching this video. I encourage you to subscribe to the Learn Your Land YouTube channel and to head on over to learnyourland.com and sign up for the email newsletter so that we can stay in touch. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next video.